गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज द लेसन ऑफ क्लास नाइन फॉर द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ जोग्राफी टॉपिक रेवल्यूशन ऑफ द अर्थ विच इज कवर्ड इन चैप्टर थ्री रोटेशन एंड रेवल्यूशन स्टार्टिंग ऑन पेज नंबर थर्टी टू ऑफ योर टेक्सट बुक and has been submitted to you on 3rd of may 2021 so now children let us start with our topic and discuss about revolution the earth revolves around the sun in an elliptical orbit this is the elliptical orbit this motion along with rotation makes earth's environment complete complex the characteristics of revolution are number 1 the earth moves in an elliptical orbit at an average speed of 100000 km per hour number 2 when the earth is closer to the sun the gravitational pull makes earth move faster than when it is away from the sun number 3 the period or the time taken by the earth to make one complete revolution is actually 365 days 5 hours 48 minutes and 45.51 seconds which means 365 days and 6 hours the length of one solar year is 365 days the remaining 6 hours are adjusted every 4 years into one complete day and added to the month of february when february has 29 days the year is known as leap year having 366 days number 4 the earth's axis is always inclined to its orbital plane at an angle of 66 and a half degree that has been discussed the last time in the last session earth revolves from west to east direction or anti clockwise direction so this is the direction of movement of earth around the sun anti clockwise or from west to east now children let us discuss about the effects of revolution so the first effect is the seasonal variation the amount of heat received depends on the angle at which sun's rays reach it when a place receives vertical sun rays the amount of heat get concentrated on a small area whereas same amount of heat is spread over a larger area in the case of oblique rays so revolution along with the earth's axis axis of the earth causes different seasons that is changing weather conditions due to difference in the heating of the earth the second effect of revolution is formation of perihelion and aphelion the earth's orbit is elliptical in shape so the distance between the earth and the sun varies when the earth is farthest 
from the sun. The position is called aphelion. The distance between sun and earth is 152 million kilometers and it occurs in 4th of July on 4th of July. Second is when the earth is closest to the sun, the position is known as perihelion. The earth is 147.3 million kilometers away from the sun and it occurs on 3rd of January every year. The third effect is creation of heat source. The spherical shape of the earth along with its movements around the sun causes difference in distribution of heat on the earth's surface. As a result, the world has been divided into three distinct heat temperate zone and physics zone. So this is about the effects of revolution. Now let us discuss about sol solstice and equinoxes. Yes. On June 21st, the earth is in the position where North Pole is tilted towards the sun. So here it is. June 21st, summer solstice, the earth is tilted, the northern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun. On this day, the sun is overhead at Tropic of Cancer and this day is known as summer solstice. Now, similarly, during the month of December, the 1st of December, the southern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun, while northern hemisphere is tilted away. This day is known as winter solstice. Winter solstice and the sun's rays were vertical at Tropic of Capricorn. So it is, it is having summers in the northern, uh, southern hemisphere and it is winters in northern hemisphere. Hence we call it as winter solstice. Next is equinox. On two days, 21st of March, that is spring or vernal equinox, and 23rd of September, that is autumnal equinox. The sun shines vertically over the equator. The sun's rays are vertical at the equator. So the days and nights are of equal length throughout the world. When the apparent northward movement of the sun continues up to 21, June 21, there are variation in the duration of daylight as the day length increases. Now let us discuss about the cycle of seasons. Seasons are not the same as if it is being discussed with you. The revolution of the earth around the sun and the tilted axis of the earth causes variation in seasons. So seasons are not same in all parts of the earth. The four major seasons are spring, summer, autumn, winter. Generally correspond to the maximum position, dates of solstice and equinox as has been discussed here. Summers, winters, autumn and spring. This is all because of the revolution of the earth around the sun 
and the tilted axis of the earth. Now, Earth's position on 21st of June is the summer solstice in northern hemisphere. The duration of sunlight increases from 12 hours at the equator to 13 hours 27 minutes at Tropic of Cancer and further to 24 hours at Arctic Circle. Beyond the Arctic Circle, the region experienced 24 hours of daylight. 24 hours of daylight. This phenomena is termed as midnight sun. Norway is called the land of midnight sun. And many tourists flock to Norway to witness it. The sun is visible only at very low height, just above the horizon. It continues for almost three months up to autumn equinox. After 21st June, the hours of sunlight starts decreasing. Second is the position on 23rd of September. The sun is vertically overhead at equator and the day and night are equal. It is autumn in the northern hemisphere and spring in the southern hemisphere. Now the position on 22nd of December. The southern hemisphere has summers and northern hemisphere as winters, as you can notice here. In this picture. Again, on 21st of March, it is spring in the Northern Hemisphere and autumn in the Southern Hemisphere. It will be more clear with this particular diagram. So, on 20th or 21st of March, it is spring in the northern hemisphere and autumn in the northern, uh, autumn in the southern hemisphere. So, this is overall the movement of the earth around the sun, the revolution of the earth and the variation in various seasons. Now, children, let us recapitulate the topic by means of a quickly test. So, uh, I'll read out a few questions after which you may pause the lesson for five minutes. So, your questions are, how much time Earth takes to complete a revolution? Number two, define apogeum. Number three, what are the effects of revolution? Number four, Name the two solstices on which day there they occur. Name the two solstices on which day they occur. Number five, which place is known as the land of midnight sun? Now, the answers to the above questions are: three sixty-five days and. 5 hours, 48 minutes, 45.51 seconds. This is the actual time Earth takes to complete one revolution. 365 days and almost 6 hours. Number 2. When the Earth is farthest from the Sun, the position is called epihelion. Number 3. The effects of revolution are variation in seasons, creation of heat zones such as storage, temperature, and rigid. Number four, summer solstice on June 21st and winter solstice on December 25th. Number five, Norway. 
i hope you all have understood the topic very well so you all are required to read the chapter at least twice and do the following back exercise questions now with this i conclude this interactive session thank you